thought I'd just make one up today. So there's my Piper 15 by 11 Fabriano. I've got me, I'm going to do one of those boat, boat scenes, so I might just use the Ultramarine Burnt Umber, maybe a touch of light red just to give it a bit of extra, a bit of extra oomph. Um, got our watercolour jar. The colours are all Cutman watercolours, squeezed out and allowed to dry. I generally leave them overnight, you have to put them a bit thin for them to dry. If you give it a bit thick like I've done this one, it's still a bit sort of spongy the next day, but you can just about get away with it. I always use the same three brushes, the, the, the three quarter inch flat on the left, number three rigger in the middle, and then 95% of the painting is done with the large run round snake. Now, this is just clean water I'm putting on. I don't want the, uh, the clouds to all diffuse, I don't want any hard edges. See there, I'm just picking up colour off the board. I do try and avoid it, but it's not always possible. Um, so I've burnt one back, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of light red as well. Yeah, so I'm just going to use these three colours down the bottom of the palette and just see where it goes basically. Let's just brush it in, first little bit. I want to make sure I preserve a sort of lighter area somewhere. Let's darken it up, a bit of ultramarine. Incidentally, I'm leaving the radio on as well on this one. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. I have had a couple of uh, warnings recently with regards to copyright, but what harm it's doing by having the radio on in the background, I've got no idea. This is a uh, ultramarine burnt umber. Let's just darken it up a bit on the sides. If I'm not happy with it on, it, on the first sort of draft, I'll sort of dry it, re-wet it and start again. To get it, do it in sort of two layers, so to speak. See, so that, that I'm not 100% happy with that, but... Airs are coming apart, so I'm just dipping the tips in, just to bring them back together. And then we're back in there. Just enough water on the brush just to keep the airs together so you've got that chisel edge. Bit of light red in there. Just go across here a bit. Now what I'm going to do is uh, pull this tight. I'm going to dry it, re-wet it and then have another go. Because I'm not quite happy with how that's turned out. So let's just give that a quick, quick dry. along now, I can't see any wet um, paper anywhere, apart from that little bit there, you see the light reflecting off it, so I know that's dry, so I'm going to clean the brush, clean the brush, just clean water and then just re-wet it all the way down to the bottom, and then that you got your first layer on and then it's Let's put this second layer on, and you can see it's sort of just trying to get a bit more depth to it. A bit more moody and bit of a bit of tissue here, just want to get a bit of bit of cloud work going on. Get up there. Bit more. You've obviously got until it starts to uh, dry to get it in. Bit more down there. Watch the pools of water that build up at the bottom, the little reservoirs. Bit more up there. Don't be afraid to paint over your clouds if it 
think it improves it. You can always put them back in. Clouds going down onto the horizon. Uh, I think that looks a bit better than the, the first, the first one. You see the advantage of drying it, re-wetting it, and then going at it again. Just really helps with the, the texture, the depth, and all, and all that palaver. So it's stretched again, so I'm just going to pull it tight, refix it. And then before I put some of the sort of distant land in, I'd, I'd rather, rather it was just a little bit drier because there is a bit, a bit of water at the moment. So I can take advantage of the fact that it's still watery by putting a bit more, a bit more in there. I don't want to get too mad. I don't really want to put a fat lot more in. Um, right, well, I'll, it's a bit wet, but I'll still go at it. But you can see how the airs have split up. So if I just dip them into the water, bring the ears back together. I don't want too much water on the brush, so the excess I'll take off on the tea towel. Just enough to keep the ears together. Now I want it nice and dark. So I'm going into all three colours. And then give it into that blue until it gets really dark. Now where do you want the your, your, your lamb to be? So let's go about a third of the way up. You see, because it's still wet, it's just softening off a bit. Get on a bit stronger. Bring down some reflections. A little bit on this side, something like that. And again, pull down those reflections. It's a bit drier here, so you can see. I don't know if you can see the difference. See how wet it's on this side. It's, it's. There's no sharp edges compared to where I've got some sharp edges, which is telling me that the paper's drying. So I'm just waiting for this side to already up a bit, see how strong it's going on a bit now. As it gets drier, it'll, the paint will look stronger as it goes on. I don't have reflections, oh, no, I want to try and make sure these are level. Something like that. Another another layer of land in there. So this one's going to come out somewhere. You can see it's drying very well now, right in the middle. Again, just putting a little reflection down there. Let's have a At the moment, I can't decide whether to leave hairs on or take them off at the time they come off the brush. See what I'm finding is. Yeah, unless you can get it off first time, I'd, I'd leave it on because it does make. The trouble is, if you leave it on there till it's dry, it sort of dries with a white line. Bits of land there sticking up from the uh, well, bits of land, they're like sort of ripples on the water. It's like little ripples, the uh, sort of shadows amongst the uh, ripples on the water. Uh, a bit more down there, strengthen that a bit more. I'm just trying to hold it parallel to the bottom of the paper. It's hard because I've got the, the thing here in my way. I can't get my 
my elbow down any further. What I do know is the paper's coming off. Well, I think this is the third time I've pulled it flat now. So one of the advantages of stretching it beforehand is you don't have to keep doing this. Normally I only have to do it the once, but because I've put so much water on it, it's sort of continuing to stretch. That should be about it by now, I think, the stretching. Let's just stick a few more of these sort of ripples around here. A bit more over this side. And it will get dark now because it's dry. It's dry, but the uh, the consequence of that is you don't get it doesn't blend in so well. But then you can try and sort of blend it in by doing this sort of chisel chisel work on it, get it in so far, and then just try and blend this, the edges in, something like that. rocks in there. If you can imagine the lights coming down here so like that, so it's just catching the, the edge of these rocks here and you get these little eye lights on them. Well, I didn't mean to do that. See how the light's just catching the top of the rocks as it's, as it's coming down. And then it's so tempting to just get mad with these and you put too many in. You can just paint straight over them if you put too many in. Also, just try and random, randomise them. Just don't just put them all in a straight line, which uh, I often tend to do. Actually, you just sort of go along like that, and you've got them all in a straight line. It just doesn't look natural. Could have just like little pebbles scattered about the place. Always looks best in the darker areas as well. You know, don't bother putting them here because you just ain't going to see them. You know, where it's light. Stick them where it's dark. And they'll really stand out then. You know, I'm in danger now, just doing completely over the top, putting too many. So I'm just going to leave it, leave it at that. Um, I don't think I'll need the hike anymore now. So I'm just going to switch to the uh, three quarter inch flats. I mean, just going to the same three colours. But I want it nice and dark, so I want to do them like silhouettes. Paint the boats in like silhouettes. So if we sort of, you know what I'm going to do, just very simply. Something like so, put the reflection in. The master. Nice big mast. And then don't forget the reflection. Down there, like so. I'll stick another one, smaller one. Smaller one up there. A little mask on here. Where should we put the other one? Just make that mask just a little bit bigger. Obviously, the higher you go there, the lower you got to come down. And then, 
I'm just going to pop another one, just an even smaller one I think. Somewhere like that. I'm just going to put some, just some little ends on the horizon there, so you just do And you can just switch to the rigger. Just some very fine lines. Like uh, just little ropes. Little something. Let's just pop a little man there. The bloke sat in the one of them. I just remember to do the reflection. And then finally. And I think I'll leave leave it at that. Got my signature down here. Uh, let's have a closer look at it. So I've put the mount on, and uh, this is what it looks like. So as usual I've started with the sky, brushing in some dark colour from either side, creating this sort of light that comes right down the middle and into the water. I always try and paint the water and the sky at the same time, that way we've got to keep mixing the same colour, trying to get the same, same, uh, exactly the same um, effects like. These are just taken out with a bit of tissue, the white clouds. And then just using the, the edge of the height just to put in these distant clouds as they go ever nearer to the horizon line and thin out and get narrower and narrower. This headland, I put, the, put it in initially when it was still wet and you can still see how put it in wet on wet you get the sort of soft edges as opposed to this end was slightly drier so you can see how it's just a little bit sharper the edge, the profile of the hills. In using the hike sort of chisel edge just to create these sort of shadows in the ripples on the water. Piece of card to scrape in a few rocks. It's also get quite pleasing if you imagine the lights coming from over here and just sort of striking the, the rocks on its way through. Boats put in very simply, not forgetting a little reflection and then the mast going right up and obviously coming down as far as it goes up to create the uh, illusion. Using a rigger just to put in a little bits of ropes and stuff on the uh, boats and like off to the anchor and all this. Bit of life, got our little fella sat in the one boat and the seagulls flying overhead.
Just remember to make your boat smaller and smaller as they go off into the distance towards the horizon. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask. And I'll see you again soon.